was not the first. So first of all, uh, I did not allow anything with that. Well, listen, excuse me. I'm not going to let you accuse me of committing criminal activity. I am not going to take that. You have allowed people to hunt people like me. Oh, that is nonsense. That is such nonsense. A news conference on stopping COVID mandates getting heated as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis fires back at a heckler who blamed him for a racist shooting in Jacksonville last month. The 2024 presidential candidate joins us now. Governor, thank you so much Good for morning. being here. I wondered what you thought about in that moment and what you would say about reducing gun violence in America. Well, first of all, it was just outrageous to take a, an incident that's really been a gut punch to our state as well as to the Jacksonville community and to try to leverage that as a political cudgel to use against somebody that you disagree with politically. I am not going to sit there and stand for that. I am not going to let anyone impugn me in that way, uh, and we will fight back. But I think it shows, you know, part of the problem with our society that people would stoop to that level. We can have disagreements on issues. Uh, we can even be here on issues, uh, but to take some nut job um, and to try to act like we were uh, a part of that is absolutely absurd. Now, this guy was very mentally ill. He had actually been Baker acted, which in Florida is one of the uh, kind of the initial involuntary commitment uh, several years ago. Uh, he was not, though, done on a more permanent basis. Had that happened, and it probably should have, uh, he would have ended up being ineligible uh, to purchase a firearm. So clearly, people that, that don't have their wits about them, you know, those people need to be dealt with appropriately under our system. Yeah, that's one topic I want to get to. I'm going to try and motor through a bunch right now if we can go over the next several minutes and that is the next topic which is COVID is coming back in some areas the mass debate is back as well it was on the floor of the Senate yesterday with JD Vance the uh, the senator from Ohio uh, at our Fox debate a few weeks ago you said you would have fired Fauci and prior to that you you said to paraphrase that Donald Trump outsources government uh, to Anthony Fauci during the pandemic three days ago with Hugh Hewitt he was asked about this, and here's how that conversation went. Why did you keep Dr. Fauci? No, no, no. Dr. Fauci was there. First of all, you're not allowed. He's civil service, and you're not allowed to fire him. When Ron DeSantis says on the debate stage, you didn't fire Fauci, and you shut down the country, and that was a mistake, how will you respond? He shut down his beaches. He shut down the entire state. He tries. He has a selective memory. When he's your action out, what you think of that, Governor? Well, look, uh, uh, at the end of the day, the leader's got to take responsibility. I think it was pretty clear early on in COVID that, that Fauci was misfiring. Uh, he was elevated to where his his pronouncements were basically viewed as gospel around the country. Uh, and we uh, rejected that. And we fought. When we reopened the state, he criticized us. When we had kids in school, first state in the country to have all school districts, he criticized us. When we said no vax mandates, they criticized us. So we had to chart the course. And obviously, the results speak for themselves because people flooded into if Florida. I but could, I would note, I, uh, I Donald Trump. Yeah, he, but he, he's making claims that Florida had the third highest death rate in America. Uh, he says you shut down. Yeah, Florida. that's total nonsense. He said tight as a drum. Yeah, so vax lines. Now, on April 1st of yeah. 2020, just to be clear, you did allow the local authorities to determine who goes on a beach and who doesn't. And I think the rule you made that day was to limit it to 10 people or less. Uh, do you disagree with any of that? Right and it there? was it. So, right. So that was a local decision. Uh, but, you know, those first few weeks, uh, we followed some of the federal guidelines. I've always uh, said that. Uh, but then I was looking at the data myself. Uh, and I made the decision that we were going to chart a separate course. And so we did that. And, and clearly, Florida boomed as a result. But I would note this, because this is important. You know, Donald Trump's reelection campaign in October of 2020 was running ads bragging with Fauci saying, Trump did everything I told him to do. They were putting that out. They were bragging about it. And then on January 19th, 2021, Donald Trump's last day as president, he gave Fauci a presidential commendation. So those were wrong to do that. Uh, and clearly, I think the important thing is this, looking forward, we need accountability for what went wrong, because those people in positions of authority at the CDC, Fauci, 
Though they lied about lockdowns, school closures, mask mandates, they were wrong. It did a lot of damage around this country. And I know that because the people that were harmed, a lot of them came to Florida and would tell us about it. So we need a reckoning so that this never happens to our country again. And we instituted permanent protections in Florida against mask mandates, against all this stuff. People said, oh, uh, you're talking about old issues. Well, you see they're trying to bring it back. Montgomery County, Maryland School District, forcing students to wear KN95 masks uh, during the school day. We know that doesn't work. So we've got to clear house in these medical bureaucracies. We need evidence-based medicine, not narrative-based policies. Also wanted to ask you about this. So you're a former member of the House of, in, in Congress, as a House, and you want to be president. Right now, they're debating whether to shut down the government if the impeachment vote for Joe Biden doesn't go forward. Would you favor tying impeachment and government funding well, I don't know necessarily the details. I mean, I think they should do the inquiry because I think some of the corruption that's been uncovered is really, really significant. And I think they're right to be investigating that. Um, you know, on the government funding, I mean, the way I look at it is this government is spending way too much money. They've locked in the COVID era levels of spending, which are totally unsustainable. So they should absolutely have a big fight over writing that ship. But then you also have the issue of their funding really bad policies. So, for example, Biden's border policies are causing a massive influx of illegal aliens. They're causing a massive influx of fentanyl, human trafficking, sex trafficking, uh, the Department of Justice and the FBI with the weaponization. When there's memos circulating targeting observant Catholics as potential terrorists, when the FBI has targeted parents going to school board meetings, the power of the purse is really the way uh, that you hold those agencies accountable. So, so some of the guys in the House, like Chip Roy, uh, who are raising the alarm about this, I think are right. And I think part of the reason our bureaucracy is so out of control and this deep state is developed is because Congress has not been willing to use the power of the purse to discipline these agencies. Let's talk about Disney. About a month ago on CNBC, you said Disney's going to lose that lawsuit. Well, just yesterday, that lawsuit has been trimmed down, and some would argue significantly, now only applying to free speech against you and what you said about the company. Can you win it? And they're going to lose, and they're obviously going to lose that claim. It's a bogus claim. Th these were acts of the Florida legislature. They had every right to um, to make sure that Disney's living under the same laws as every other company, paying taxes, following the law. Uh, we've got a great business environment in Florida. Uh, number one for new business formations. Number one economy by CNBC. They've rated amongst 50 states. But here's the thing. We are going to stand up for our children in the state of Florida. And it is wrong uh, to try to get things like transgender ideology into the elementary schools. And as a dad of a 6'5 and a 3-year-old, uh, my wife and I are very sensitive about what parents are going through. So that fight ultimately was about the appropriate uh, role of education, parents being involved, and making sure we don't have indoctrination in the schools. And we have been able to deliver for parents in Florida on that. And that is not a partisan issue. That's an issue that independent and Democrat parents agree with. They want the schools focused on the basics. They don't want a second grader told uh, that she can change her gender. Ron DeSantis, thank you for coming on the no. show today. And we will see you in a couple of weeks at the debate. Thank you, Governor. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.